Yeah, we could get together and we walk into it. Yeah, so basically the impetus for it was um, partly traveling to Palestine. Okay. And um, seeing the wall there and thinking about like physical boundaries that people put up. And then I had personally gone through some losses, both due to death and in relationships with people that made me start building up my own kind of interior walls. And I gotcha. noticed myself closing off in certain ways. And so I was trying to like investigate the idea of external and internal barriers and why we put, the, why we put walls up, why we break them down hmm. and that whole kind of thing. And it turned into this play. Um, I started writing it, just like doing free writes, basically, uh, through this artist activist program I was in. Okay. And uh, and the free writes, yeah, I just kind of started writing it, and I wrote it actually as narrative, like as a short story. And so I wrote the whole play as a short story that I'm adapting, that I adapted for stage in the process. So people are always talking in third person about themselves, and there's the wall, like so it's this interesting mix of narrative and then into dialogue and like. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how it all started. It's probably a list of various types of walls now you've, you've probably come up to with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thinking, I mean, it's interesting based on like, so one of the cast, men cast members grew up in Germany and so like her experience, and she, was, she knew a lot of references in terms of the Berlin Wall, whereas mm -hmm. some of another girl in the cast also has spent time in Palestine and done a lot of activism around that. So a lot of this relates to what her and I think, thinking about Palestine, but it's, so it's really interesting how because it's a science fiction play, because it's allegorical, not really set anywhere in particular, that it can then apply yeah. like across across the board, which is great. Where are you from? I grew up in Michigan and Germany. And I'm my, from Detroit, by the way. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I was I grew up in the suburbs of Detroit until I was like ten. Okay. Um, and my mom is from Nebraska and my dad is from Lebanon. Really? So kind of like a little bit all over. And I think that's also part of it actually. Like I have always and Az and I have talked about this because she's also like international all over mm -hmm. the place, but just that feeling of like, what are boundaries? What can you cross? What can you not based on your personal experiences? And just- We say boundaries, like even like when, when moving to one place to another, yeah. what's culturally embraced, what's culturally, I don't know, hesitant. Exactly, I mean. yeah, I think so. I think it's like, yeah, like what, I, I don't know. It's interesting. Like What's I shocking to us is not shocking to, to others. other people. Yeah. And when you're in, like, I think it's interesting how certain things in your own society, like certain things I wouldn't do in the States because, or certain boundaries I wouldn't cross as like an American. Mm -hmm. And because of the strict, whether it's, who knows, whether it could be class or racial boundaries or whatever, certain things you're like, oh, I shouldn't do this because that's what I've been, I'm gonna say indoctrinated to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when I'm in like another country, I don't know any of those boundaries. So like, I'm like, oh, I can do this. And people forgive me for it because I'm a foreigner or whatever. Do you feel like more like you're Lebanese or you feel like you're more American? Or are you being, are you being perceived by other people? I mean, like just I mean, I think that's just that term, the third culture kid. Third culture kid. kid. Yeah, just like parents from two different countries and then grew up in another country. So that's kind of just like a mix, like I'm most more American Transcultural, than anything, yeah. but than anything else. But I don't necessarily feel like, yeah, I would say I'm more American than anything else. But I feel much very, very attached to these like different places where I have family and friends yeah. where I grew up, and hmm. yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. So that's kind of. Where are you from? Mother? Me? Yeah. Oh my God. Um, well, I'm Sudanese and Somali. Okay. Um, but I grew up, um, I grew up in France and, and in Kenya, and I've been here in New York for about 10, 12 years. So I definitely understand. Yeah, when she's talking about the wall, that's what I was wondering. Well, it was so funny yeah. how we even like people. We did the same master's program in arts politics, and she was the year before me. Yes. Yeah, and how people were like, "You two haven't met yet." <laughs> <laughs> so what was, 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 was your master's? What you got? What was your? What you, was your? Why don't you, you explain the master's? <laughs> you go for it. It's so hard. <laughs> Can you explain it? I would just say it's like yeah. using arts for political and social activism, yeah. basically. Yeah. It's an amazing program. It's an amazing uh -huh. program, and it was really funny. It's like it's What's the program small, called? It's called Arts Politics at, NYU. at okay. Tisch NYU. Okay. It's a very new program. I think it's about four or five years old. And it's like pretty much you are in a room with all these artists okay. you know, from different like kind of backgrounds and fields, and they're like, you know, you have your dancers and the performers and you have like, you know, filmmakers, but all of them are very politically conscious. And so it's pretty much just a program where we just ask a whole lot of questions, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. We do, it's all very and, critical, yeah. very political, yeah. very critical, but it's also about like how you can become your own agent, you know? 
how like you don't have to wait to either get a job or institution for you to be not to be qualified but mm. like to change you know like you are the change yeah and exactly because like that's even this project it was interesting a girl wrote an article about this project for this um, women's art activism magazine and in it she talked about like we were talking and she was also in the program in my okay. year and I was like I, something about me being like sick of waiting for like some theater to accept the play da, da, da. so I was just like okay like I'm gonna write this I'm gonna raise money for it raise like five thousand dollars and was just like find the people kind of just because you have to like yeah you can't wait yeah. because then also if you're if your work doesn't suit like if your work doesn't suit traditional models or yes. institutional models of what something's meant to be then they're not gonna accept yeah. it anyway yes. you know and it's like yes. how do you how do you craft the things you want to see? You yeah. have to do it, yeah. and then mm. other people can yeah. model off of yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. And that's why like, I was interested in working with Noelle in The Wall, because it resonated so much with the themes that I am doing in my, own, you know, my work, the idea of like minority, the other, the haves and the have-nots, and, like, and all these kind of stories, because it's a story that is like, it's, it's so rarely, I don't know, maybe in plays and theater that's a sci-fi. You, you think that mm. it should be like, Oh, it's a film, you know. It's yeah. like, but it's like it's a play, and they, they can go a lot of places with this as a film. Yeah, well, <laughs> but what's really interesting is like the theatricality of it. We have no props at all, except an orange. We have like one prop. Everyone, and we're not using mime to like show things. It's all abstract gestures, mm -hmm. and so like the idea of the theatricality of it. So then it, I think that idea that it can become molded to anything, and how do we make this story uniquely? theatrical. Gotcha. I think that's also my thing with theater versus film is that like, because I love film, I love film, mm -hmm. I love movies, I think it's a beautiful form, yeah. but I think theater often tries to imitate it because that's the more popular, that's more yeah. mainstream thing. And then it's like, well then why write a play? Like, what can we do that's so uniquely theatrical that can only be done in live performance? So then otherwise the, the, the medium of theater is going to die and not be interesting or of use to society if it's like can just doing the same thing film's doing and film can do it in a much more extensive realistic manner mm -hmm. um, can be spread to many more people mm -hmm. so I think that that's like a big thing that I think I address as an artist like theatrically I'm always asking myself why do theater why make this theater why make this live performance great questions mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's yeah. Walk. yeah is this one of your guys or no <laughs> no I just left it, left it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah